a brand new mini pocket handheld oscilloscope, the DSO152 by Finesse. DSO stands for Digital Storage Oscilloscope. So it's a digital oscilloscope that can measure and record electrical signals. It converts the analog signal into a digital format and stores it in its digital memory. Along with this, you also get a probe and a user guide. I will explain how to use this prop, but first let's go ahead and unbox this oscilloscope. It comes with this instructional manual. Illigator clip leads with this little connector that plugs into this slot, a USB type C cable for the charging and a strap. DSO152 is a highly practical and cost-effective handheld oscilloscope launched by Finercy, which is aimed at the maintenance industry and the research education industry. The oscilloscope has a real-time sampling rate of 2.5 ms per second, a bandwidth of 200 kHz, and a complete trigger functions single, normal, and automatic. It can be used freely for both periodic analog signals and non-periodic digital signals and can measure voltages up to plus minus 400 volts. The screen is 2.8 inch, 320 by 240 resolution high definition LCD screen. It has a built-in 1000 mAh high quality lithium battery that can be used continuously for about four hours after fully charged. On the left side, you can find the reset hole, charging indicator light during the charging, it's red, and when the battery is fully charged, the green LED is turned on. And this is the Type-C charging interface, 5 volt and 1 m On the top, this is for the signal input prop MXC interface. This is for the square wave calibration, and this is a trick wheel button. It serves multiple purposes. Short press left or right to scroll through different parameters function selection. And if you short press this button, it will exit the auto calibration. There is nothing on the right side. The auto button is used for the automatic adjustment. The mode button also serves multiple purposes. If you short press this button, you can select auto, single, and normal switching. And if you long press this button, you can switch between the rising edge or falling edge switching. These up and down arrows are used for the parameter addition and subtraction adjustment. Run button also serves multiple purposes. Short press this button to run or pass waveforms. If you long press this button, it will show or hide the detailed parameters. This is the power switch button. Simply long press this button to turn on the display. To turn it off, simply short press this button. Next, we have the accessories designed to make probing and measurement simple. So let's go ahead and open this plastic bag. First of all, I highly recommend you should read this user's guide. It has the prop characteristics and description of all the items in the accessory kit. And there is also information about the frequency compensation. These are marking rings, locating sleeves and adjustment tube. We don't need it for now, so let's put it aside. So this is the prop that we will be using for the measurements. And you can see it has this standard PNC connector. And in order to use it with the oscilloscope, it's also provided with this connector and without it, you won't be able to connect this prop to the oscilloscope because it has a different type of interface. So first you will need to connect this and then you can plug it in. The probe also has a compensation trimmer which is used for the frequency compensation adjustment in 10X mode. This is the retractable hook tip. This is the ground lead. Use the alligator clip to attach the prop to a ground reference. The probe also has this slide switch. It is used to set the prop at innovation. So that's all about the accessories and interfaces. And now it's time to turn on the oscilloscope. So let's go ahead and long press the power button. By default, the auto mode is selected with a falling edge and you can see it's running. But before I do anything, first I'm going to calibrate it. While the prop is not connected, I'm going to long press the straight wheel button. You will see this message please press run to start calibration or press OK to exit calibration. It will exit if I press the track wheel button, but since I have to calibrate it, so I will go ahead and press the run button. The calibration process may take around one minute. Anyway, you will know when the calibration is completed. The oscilloscope is calibrated and before I connect the prop, first let me explain how to use these buttons. If you want to hide these values, simply long press the run button and vice versa. As I said earlier, by default, the auto mode is selected. Now, if you want to select another mode, simply short press the mode button 
and it will scroll through normal single and auto modes. Once the desired mode is selected, press the run button. Next to the mode, you can see the falling edge icon. If you want to change it to the rising edge, simply long press the mode button. Now, to change the position of the waveform, first you will need to select this baseline indicator icon and for this, you can use the track wheel button. Short press this button to the left or right until the baseline indicator icon is selected, it will turn blue. Then you can use the up and down arrows to change the position of the waveform. Now, to change the position of the trigger voltage indicator icon, first select this icon and then use the arrow buttons to change the position. This is the vertical sensitivity, which means the voltage represented by a large grid in the vertical direction. While it's selected, you can use the arrow buttons to change its value. Next is the mode indicator icon. This must be consistent with the 1X or 10X switch setting on the probe handle. If the probe is in 1X mode, then the oscilloscope should also be set to 1X. If the probe is in 10X mode, then the oscilloscope should also be set to 10X. Next is the horizontal time base, indicating the length of time represented by large grid in the horizontal direction. Next is the AC or DC coupling indicator icon. AC means AC coupling and DC means DC coupling. You can control this run parameter using the run button. Run means running and stop means pause. I'm sure I cover pretty much everything and now it's time to connect the prop. First, let's connect it to its own calibrator. Press the auto button and wait for a while. The probe has been calibrated and now let's start the testing. First, we are starting with this analog sensor. This is basically a potentiometer. The right and left legs are connected to a 5 volt power supply. I've connected the probe positive to the middle leg of the potentiometer and the probe ground leg is connected to the ground. Since we are dealing with the DC voltage, so you need to make sure DC is selected. If not, then you can use the trick wheel to change it. Next, we need to select X1 or X10S for the slide switch on the prop. Right now, it's set to X1, so we are good to go. But if in case the slide switch was set to X10, then we would change it to X10. Let me show you how to do it. Use the trick wheel to select the X1. Now, use the arrow buttons to switch between the X1 and X10 but for now i'm going to go with x1 if i rotate knob of the potentiometer you can see the signal completely disappears and this is because of these small boxes right now each box represents 10 millivolts so while 10 millivolt is selected we can only display a signal of 40 millivolts from this baseline and if you change the position of the baseline which represents zero volts from the center to the bottom then you can display a signal of 80 millivolts but since I'm not dealing with low voltage, so I can increase this value. Let's increase this to 1 volt. Now each box represents 1 volt. Let's move the baseline down so that we can display the complete 5 volt signal. Now you can clearly see the change in the voltage level, but it's too fast, so let's reduce the frequency. So this is how exactly you can set different parameters and read any analog or digital sensor. Next, I have this very basic RC circuit. You can see a 10 kilo ohm resistor and a 470 microfarad electrolyte capacitor are connected in series. A push button is connected in parallel with the capacitor. When the button is open, the capacitor is charged using this 10 kilo ohm resistor. And when the button is pressed, the charge stored in the capacitor directly goes to the ground. So let's check this on the oscilloscope. Next, I'm going to use Arduino as the signal generator. 
I will generate different PWM frequencies and I will also change the duty cycle. Right now, I think I don't need to explain anything else as I already explained all the parameters. Anyway, I use one potentiometer to change the duty cycle and the other potentiometer to change the frequency. Unfortunately, I don't have a function generator. Otherwise, I would have displayed different waveforms. Anyway, I'm sure you got the idea how to use this mini pocket hand hit oscilloscope. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in the next episode. And thanks for watching.